With Princeton University, Berkeley, and NASA dedicating considerable resources to plasma universe concepts, let's examine how this plays out in Earth's catastrophe cycle. To account for all the evidence and the ancient stories, one has to truly begin to look at the Sun. Plasma dominates the process of such an event, to the physics of the eruption, to the chemical composition of the shell, to the state of the Earth and Sun before, during, and after the event and including the potential greater connection to the galaxy and beyond. To draw this into the catastrophe cycle, here's living legend Dr. Anthony Peratt from Los Alamos National Lab. Many astronomers, physicists, have uh, proposed, hypothesized, that at, at one time um, th there was an immense uh, solar outburst uh, from the sun, maybe 100,000 times what it is right now. Uh, Tommy Gold uh, was, was one of the first to suggest this, uh, this hypothesis, and um, it has been followed up by other people. So uh, many physicists, many astronomers believe that uh, in the past, millennia ago, there was an intense solar outburst, and uh, so I'm going to pursue that. The Nobel laureates uh, Chandrasekhar and uh, Enrico Fermi were the first to uh, to solve the uh, what was called the st stability uh, condition of a uh, z-pinch. Here's the uh, the nine uh, plasmoids. Actually, I've only drawn five or so. Let's look at the uh, the, the so-called I or Al morphology in that uh, in, in that that z-pinch. It looks something like this when you when you false color it and and fill it in and and then compare it uh, to what we call I mask petroglyphs around the world. This is Easter Island, a New Grange. Um, where else? Uh, this is in uh, uh, California. This is actually a pictograph of the, 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 the uh, Chumash Indians. The Aboriginal peoples are very, very good, actually as are we, in uh, preserving what is, sacrosanct, what is sacrosanct. As the current continues to increase, it produces these mushroom sort of features. Through decades of searching the world collaborations with amazing observers like Van der Sluis and John McGovern, Peratt has amassed the most extensive data set of petroglyph representation of global solar storms, and the most famous of those is the stick man, which is not amazing by itself, but those dots on each side, found around the world from the exact same time periods, is indicative of shared experience, and the plasma formation called a z-pinch seems to fit the description of both the drawings and the physics of a solar disaster. Some of his more interesting works include how the plasma columns might look as they broke out in various instabilities, and how their effect on the otherwise largely undisturbed Nazca region could frankly either be the ancient peoples recreating the heavens, or the electric creations themselves which were simply walked by the people in remembrance. The most perplexing was the four current form, which seems to just want to happen when you hit the juice and the corresponding 28 band counts on the heads of so many of the drawings. It is indeed Peratt's contention that the sun's normal ebb and flow are tame compared to the rare events. This is where the plasma formation of most importance comes in. The great column, the tongue, the giant god with the headdress, always associated with the sun in some form. Over the last seven years in this community, I have discovered that a small but meaningful percentage of those who learn of the cosmic plasma believe that either the sun or or one of the planets in chaos was responsible for reaching out to hit the Earth with their electrified plasma. Well, consider this. What happens when you turn on the power to a plasma ball? Does the glass create plasma fingers that reach down to the ball? Or does the ball discharge the energy over its capacity, coming from the power you just turned on? Obviously, the electric spheres can and will reach out in a plasma state if overcharged, and that includes the Earth. The only thing capable of this charging is the sun, and we already know that the primary physical and electrical structure of the atmosphere is columnar, up and down, described as tubes, just like the interplanetary magnetic fields. You might recall this graphic from Eugene Bagashoff's 2018 conference presentation. The only certainties I'm willing to offer are this structure of the global electric circuit, the existence of the descriptions in story and stone of the great crowned columns, and the fact that the sun is the only way to get this much energy into the earth. The lone exception could be the galactic superwave, although there is no way to tell whether or not that would be acting through the sun. 
And so while our previous discussion of its unpredictability holds true, the physics of such an impact on the Sun's heliosphere, on Earth's magnetosphere, and throughout the solar system via induction, just like when a CME hits the Earth, bears considerable mention. These currents would flow through the atmosphere, through the solar system, through the ground, through all the planets, and probably even through the cores. How bad would it be? Well, on Earth, this would probably be inevitable. The loss of the global power infrastructure, including the vehicles and facilities needed to fix it and build the replacement parts, which need rebuilding themselves by facilities that need rebuilt and so on. All while you can't get gasoline or cash, and shelves are empty in a few days and public water is down along with all electric wells, not to mention your heating, cooling, phone, and 911 service. Not that they'd have gas or vehicle or phones either. Earth taking in too much energy will mean that the energy must come out of the capacitor, through the mantle, through the metal-rich crust, oceans, and atmosphere. What happens from there? Only our ancestors know how much worse it could be, how much larger the effects would be than on just the infrastructure that we have built. Now this next part is fundamental, but expands into areas so alien they can cause discomfort. There's almost no describing the universality, scalability, importance to process, and the elegance of the structure of the torus. We do see it everywhere. Plasma donuts, magnetic fields, electric double layers, all demonstrative of the formation being the essence of something elemental to our existence in the cosmos. And while Princeton, Berkeley, and NASA can and have attested to this truth, so has Stan Tennant, decades undebunked, and acclaimed by professors from Harvard, Yale, and a very, very long list. I suggest you get that mind of yours open right now. Using the Hebrew letters for Genesis 1-1, wrapped in a coil around a central point, he found the letters lining up, indicating a successful pattern folding of the text geometry. The only 3D way to fold a coil undisturbed is through itself as a torus. He hilariously refers to this as the bagel theory of reality. Now this is interesting. When he saw the color map torus geometric puzzle segment, he must have realized that it had to be simplified for the torus alone and must include that coil in the middle around which he first wrapped the verse of the Torah. This absolutely is the simplest segment that can be used to piece together into a full self-coiling torus with a helical pinch point in the center. And in case you haven't noticed, he's using it to form every letter of the Hebrew alphabet in which this great puzzle concerning the essence of everything was originally written. This is an amazing understanding of plasma physics for an ancient species, not to mention language and geometry and patterns and much, much more. By the way, that name was Stan Tennant, and his videos can be found in the description box beneath this video. Coming back to the catastrophe cycle, we can be almost certain that either the disk torus known as the galaxy, the disk or full toroidal heliospheric fields, or the magnetic and electric toroidal forms of Earth are heavily involved in the catastrophe process. And in part 9, we will examine the effects on Earth's crust and magnetic poles, including what it would take to change the rotation speed and what it would take to tilt the planet. Be safe, everyone.